In the previous video, we made a request to the Open Weather API to retrieve that location's weather using the params we added to the route, and we also learned how to handle asynchronous data with the View Suspense component. In this video, we're going to take that data we retrieved and create the layout for displaying the location's weather. So here inside of the async city view component, let's begin with the markup. And on this div that's wrapping our entire component, let's apply a few classes. So first off, we're going to display this as flex. Then we'll set the flex direction to a column. And then we'll add a class of flex one here. And then we want to align all the items to the center. Now within this div, the first thing that we're going to be creating is going to be the preview banner, indicating that currently we're just previewing the city and we haven't added it to the application. So for this, we're going to create a div. Now we only want to show this preview banner if we have the query string of preview inside of the URL. So what we can say here is route.query and then we want to say preview. Then we'll apply some classes. So first off, we're going to change all the text to be white. We'll add some padding around all sides with the class of P4. We'll change the background color to our weather secondary. We will make the width be 100%. And then we want to align all the text to the center and we'll use a class of text center. And within this div, we'll have a paragraph tag. And then the content of this paragraph tag will say you are currently previewing the city. Click the plus icon to start tracking the city. And let's also give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. So we're going to make our browser a little bit smaller. And to start seeing our changes here that we're making, let's actually look up a city. So again, we'll just type in Ohio here and we'll click on this and we should now see our banner here. Also, to keep things organized, I'm going to add a few comments here to separate this component. So first off, we're going to say banner and then to save some room here, we can collapse this. And the next thing we're going to be working on is going to be the weather overview. So we'll add a comment here and we'll say weather overview. Now before we continue on to build the rest of our layout, I think it's a good time to mention since we're going to be referencing a lot of data from our component here to bring up a handy tool that I definitely recommend called the Vue.js DevTools here for Chrome. Now I won't be going over this extension within this video too much, but I definitely recommend you installing it because it is very helpful for debugging and giving you good insight into your Vue application. Now back here inside of our application, once you have installed it, how you can open it is here at the very top, we have the elements and then we have the console and then we have this drop down menu here. And then at the very bottom, you should see view and this is going to open up the Vue.js dev tools. So as you can see here, the first widget that we have is going to be a breakdown of our entire application, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, we have our entire application, then we have our component of site navigation, we have our base modal, and so on. So currently where I am in is within the async city view component. And what I find most helpful about this extension, especially with our application and in this component where we're going to need to reference a lot of data from our API that we just don't know what it is, we can get insight into our state that we have inside of this component here. And as you can see right here, we have our variable that we define weather data, which is an object, and we have all the data that's currently returned from the API visible within this extension. So instead of having to log out to the console, this weather data object here, we can just use this extension to see all the properties and data that this is returning to us. So this can be very helpful, especially for this application and this component where we're going to be needing to reference a lot of our data. And for the remainder of this video, I will be going over the layout quite quickly. So if you are confused or not understanding where I'm getting that particular data from, definitely be sure to reference the Vue.js DevTools if you are following along and you should be able to find where I'm getting that data from inside of this object. For the weather overview, we're going to create a new div and we'll apply some classes here. So first off, again, we're going to display this as flex. We're going to set the flex direction to a column. We'll align all the items to the center. We'll make the text white. And we're also going to add some padding to the top and bottom of the class of PY and then the value of 12. Within this div, the first thing that we're going to have is going to be the city name. So we'll create an H1 tag. We'll apply some classes such as text for XL and also MB2. And then to get reference to the city name, we're going to use our param that we have defined on the route here of city. 
then below the city name we're going to then define the current date and time. So for this we're going to have a paragraph tag and we'll apply a few classes again. We have text SM and we have a class of MB12. Now for the content of this first off we're going to be creating the current date. So for this we're going to be using our data that we stored inside of the variable here weather data and on here we have a property called current time and we're going to be using a method called to locale date string and we're going to convert this into the English format here and then we have this format right here of the weekday being short, the day being the two digit, and the month being long. Then below this we also want to create the current time so once again we're going to be using our weather data and that property of current time and for this we're going to be using the method to locale time string again in the US format and then for the time style property we're going to set this to short. So as you can see here once we save that we're getting this value here of invalid date and the reason why we have that is because we're not referencing the data correctly here inside of the variable weather data. Now to fix this what we can actually do here is go inside of our function get weather data and instead of just returning weather data we can return weather data dot data and that should resolve our issue. Now to save some space, let's go ahead and collapse our paragraph tag here containing the date and time, and then we'll go below this and we'll add a new paragraph tag for the current temperature. And on this paragraph tag we have a few classes, so we have text 8xl, and then we also have a class for the margin mb8. And for the content of this paragraph tag here, we're going to be using what is called the math.round method to round up the current temperature to the nearest whole number because this API actually turns back decimals. So for example, this might be 81.24. So this is going to help us not show decimals inside of the application. Then below the current temperature, we're going to display some additional information about the current weather. So for this, we're going to create a new div to wrap all this in, and then we'll apply a class here of text center. And inside of here, the first thing that we're going to output is what we call the feels like temperature. So we have a paragraph tag for this and we have the content of feels like. And we're going to be using the math.round method again because this API does return decimals. And the property that we want to specify to get this is going to be on our weather data here. We have a property of current and then we have this property of feels like. And below this we're going to display the current description of the weather. So again we'll have a paragraph tag and then we'll have the class of capitalize. And the property we're going to output here from our weather data again is going to be the current property. And then within here we have a weather array. And this could provide us several different descriptions or different conditions that we could have for that particular location. So we want to grab the first item inside of that array and then we're going to output the description. And lastly, we're going to have an image for the current condition. So for this, we're going to have an image tag and we'll apply a few classes here. So first off, we're going to apply it a width class and we're going to be using a arbitrary value to give it a fixed width of 150 pixels. And then we're going to have the height be auto. And for the source of this image, we're going to be using a binded value here. So we're going to target this address right here. And then within the data that we get returned, we can reference our weather data here, then the current property. And then we have that weather array. And again, there could be multiple items within this array. So we want the first one. And then we have a property of icon on here. And as you can see here, this is going to give us an icon that will match the current conditions for that particular location. Now taking a look here at our markup, we can actually do a slight refactor. So currently the elements inside of this div are going to be aligned to the center using this class of item center. So we actually don't need to wrap our three items here inside of this div so we can actually remove this. And that's going to be everything for the weather overview. So let's collapse this div here. And below our weather overview, we're going to add a horizontal rule to add some separation between the sections within this page here. So on this horizontal rule, we have some classes. So we have a border of white. Then we're going to set the border opacity to 10%. Then we want to give it a width of one pixel with the class of border. And then we want the width to be 100%. And the next section we're going to be working on is going to be the hourly weather. So again, I'll add a comment for this. And then what we want to do here is create another div and apply some classes. So first off, you want to set a max width here. So we're going to say max W and then we're going to use the screen MD here. And what this is going to do is set the max width here to our median breakpoint of 768 pixels. Then we want to set the width to 100% and then we'll apply some padding on the top and bottom by using the class PY12, which is 48 pixels. 
And within this div, we're going to create an additional div and we'll apply some classes. So first off, we're going to add some margin on the left and right by doing MX and then the value of eight. And then we want all the text in here to be white. So we'll say text white. And within this div, we're going to create a H2 here for a heading, and then we'll apply a class of margin bottom, and then we're going to do the value of four. And then for the content of this, we're going to say hourly weather. And below the heading, we'll create an additional div to act as the flex wrapper for our hourly data. So we'll add a class here of flex, then we'll add the class of gap 10. And then lastly here, we want to add a class called overflow X and then scroll. And what this is going to do is allow our container here to be scrollable on the X axis. Now here within the Vue.js dev tools, we have our weather data object. And within this object, we have an array called hourly, which is going to contain hourly information for the weather for that particular location. Now what we want to do inside of this div we just created is iterate over this array using a v4 loop and output each hour that we have here inside of our application. So within this div, we want to create an additional div for each hour that we have within our hourly array. So to do this, we're going to use a v4 directive. And first off on this v4 directive, we want to define our param. So we'll call this hour data, and then we'll say in, and then we want to specify that array, which is going to be whether data dot hourly. Now for the key, we actually don't have a unique ID on each one of these items within this array, but what we can use that should always be unique is going to be the time. So what we can say here is set the key equal to our hour data, and then we have a property called DT. And we'll also apply some classes here. So first off, we'll set the display to flex. Then we'll set the flex direction to be a column. Then we'll apply some gap here at the class of gap four, and we want to align all the items to the center. And inside of this div, we're going to output a few things. Now, the first thing we're going to output is going to be the current hour. So to do this, we'll create a paragraph tag here and apply two classes. So we have white space, no wrap, and then we'll adjust the font size with a class of text medium. And within this paragraph tag to output the current hour here, we're going to reference our param of our data. And on each one of these items, we have a property that we created ourselves called current time. And using the two locale time string, and we have a few configurations in here, such as the language, which is ENUS. And then we have a object here with some properties we defined. So we only want to output the hour here. So we have defined the hour property and we have set that value to numeric. And below the hour, we're going to display an icon with the current conditions for that hour. So it's going to be very similar to what we did with our icon here for the weather overview. So we'll have an image tag and we'll apply some classes here. So we're going to have a width of auto. We're going to give it a fixed height of 50 pixels. And then we're going to use a class called object cover, which is going to set the object fit property to cover. And for the source, very similar to our weather overview image, we're going to reference the same URL here. And then we're going to reference our param of our data. And then we have that array of weather and we want the first item in that array. And then we want to reference that icon property. And lastly, below the image, we're going to display the current temperature. So we'll do this with a paragraph tag here and we'll apply the class of text XL for the font size. And then we're going to use our math.round property again. And we're going to reference our param of our data and then the property of temp. And now here inside of the application, we have our hourly weather data. And if we scroll on to the left here, as you can see, the items that don't fit in the container by default, if we start to scroll, come into the container. And that is because we added this class here on this div of overflow X scroll. Now, the final section that we have for this page is going to be the weekly weather. So let's save some space here and collapse our hourly weather. And then again, we're going to create this horizontal rule here to add some separation between the sections. And then we'll add a comment here and say weekly weather. And the structure for this markup is going to be very similar to the hourly weather. So first off, we'll create a div and we'll apply some classes here. So first off, we're going to say max width and then we'll set it to our screen and then the median breakpoint. Then we want to set the width to be 100% and then we'll add some padding on the top and bottom with the class of PY12. And within this div, we'll create an additional div and apply some classes. We'll do some margin on the left and right with the class of MX8 and also the class of text white for the font color. And within here, first off, we'll create our heading. So we'll create an H2 and we'll apply a class here of MB4 for some margin on the bottom. And then for the content of this H2, we'll say seven day forecast. 
Now below the heading we're going to want to display the 7 day forecast. So again here inside of the Vue.js DevTools we have our weather data object and then we have another array on here called daily and what we want to do is create a div and output each one of these days here inside of our application. Now beneath this heading we'll create a div and then we'll add a v4 directive and we'll define our param which we'll just call day and then we want to say in and then we want to reference our array which is going to be weather data and then we want to say daily. And for the key here we're going to do a binded value and then we're going to reference our param of day and then we want to get the property of dt. And we'll apply a few classes here so we'll say display flex and then we want to align all the items to the center. Now within this div, the first thing that we want to display is going to be the current day of the week. So for this, we're going to create a new paragraph tag and apply a class of flex1. Now to obtain the current day of the week, we're going to reference our param here of day that we define inside of the v4 loop. And on here, we have a property called dt. And we'll multiply this value by 1000 and then we're going to use the method here called to locale date string and then we'll pass in the language here of enus and then we only want the actual day of the week so we can use the property weekday here and we're going to set it to long. And after the day of the week we're going to display an icon with the current conditions so for this we're going to create an image tag and we'll apply a few classes so we have a fixed width of 50 pixels, we have a fixed height of 50 pixels, and we also have the object fit set to cover. For the source value, it's the same exact as we had for our weather overview and also the icon here in our hourly weather. We're going to reference this URL right here. Then we're going to reference our param of day. Then we want the array of weather, the first item, and then the property of icon. And lastly, below the image, you want to display the high and low temperature for that particular day. So we'll create a new div and we'll apply the class of flex, gap2, flex1, and we want to justify all the content to the end. And within here we have two paragraph tags, one for the high temperature and then one for the low temperature. And as we've had to handle all the temperatures within this application so far, we'll be using the math.round method and then we're going to reference our date param and then we have this property of temp which is an object and within this object we have an additional property called max for the max temperature and then again for the low we have one called min for the low temperature. And as you can see here inside of our application, we now have the seven day forecast and that is going to wrap it up for this page.